Hello, welcome to this lesson on the types of radiation. The question of the day, what do you already know about radiation? Very simply put, radiation occurs when the ratio of protons to neutrons is just off balance. Um, protons are positive. If you put too many positives in too small of a space, they will repel each other. That's why neutrons exist, to kind of fit in between the protons and prevent them from repelling each other. But when there's too many neutrons, it's just a little too much stuff in a very small space. So if we look at this graph, um, which is graphing protons versus neutrons, if you have on the pink line, your protons and neutrons exactly equal to each other, that works pretty well when your atoms are small. But the bigger they get, the harder it is for the neutrons to get all of these protons to kind of prevent repelling. And if you have so many neutrons, uh, when it, when you have a small atom, it's it's okay, but the bigger it gets, the harder it is for the nucleus to maintain all of those neutrons. So we have this area, it's the sweet spot, uh, the belt of stability, where you are just sitting at the sweet spot where protons and neutrons can get along well. There's not too much proton-proton repulsion, but not so many neutrons that it's just in there for the sake of taking up space. Chemistry is all about the electrons until you get to nuclear chemistry that's where things change. Uh, but truthfully, all of chemistry is about achieving stability. In the case of radioactive or radioactivity, uh, we are looking at nuclei that are unstable. And in this case, we are going to have these nuclei emit matter sometimes, but always energy in order to achieve stability. And this process is radiation. Uh, it's putting out sometimes matter, but always energy. And over time, this will create a stable nucleus. Sometimes nuclei work very, very, very quickly to off put all of this instability and become more stable. And other times it takes thousands, if not millions of years for these substances to become stable. There are four types of radiation and the first are alpha particles. If you remember all the way back to learning Rutherford and the gold foil experiment, he was using a substance that was emitting alpha rays or alpha radiation uh, when he was doing that gold foil experiment. So alpha rays or alpha radiation has the exact same makeup as a helium nucleus. You have two protons and two neutrons that are going to be coming out of a different nucleus. Perhaps it's uranium or thorium. It's usually something pretty big. Uh, so it's going to be spitting out protons and neutrons together in clumps, like an alpha particle. And they have huge mass for all types of radiation, the biggest mass of them all. The alpha particles have a mass number of four because it's two protons and two neutrons. And the charge here is going to be positive too. It's a positive alpha radiation. Uh, if you can remember back to the gold foil experiment, that positive alpha rays were coming at the nucleus, which he discovered to be positive when the alpha rays avoided the nucleus of these gold foil atoms. Um, so they have a pretty big mass compared to other types of radiation. And this means that they are going to have a very weak penetrating power. What exactly does that mean? This type of radiation has a difficult time getting through other forms of matter. Um, so if you think of the gold foil, the gold foil was very, very, very thin so that the alpha radiation could go through it. Um, gold atoms are also pretty large, so there's a lot of empty space in there. If you have, um, like a piece of paper, even a piece of paper, mostly made of carbon, so the atoms are smaller, a little less empty space than a gold per se, and um, a little thicker than this gold foil, the alpha rays are going to have a difficult time penetrating or getting through that piece of paper and out to the other side. So that's what we're talking about. The reason is because the alpha particle is a pretty chunky chunk of radiation compared to the other forms. Up next, we have beta negative, which I have always just referred to as beta, <laughs> um, because beta particles are effectively electrons. It's a little weird how an electron comes out of a nucleus. It's not exactly like a, a core or a valence electron. There's kind of a manipulation inside of the nucleus that would be the equivalent of an electron leaving. And that's really all you need to know for now. These things have negligible mass. So virtually 
not measurable, and they have a charge of minus one. So these particles have a super tiny mass, so their penetrating power is going to be somewhere in the middle. It's better than an alpha particle, but because there is still some amount of mass, it can't just go on forever and ever and ever. It will be blocked by something. Um, and in this case, we're talking some pretty thin layers of aluminum. Now, beta positive is what I have always referred to as beta positive, while the other one was just beta it probably should have been beta negative and positive. But here we are, beta positive. These are also called positrons. Uh, they virtually are the same as a uh, an electron or a beta negative, except they are positive. They are going to have the same thing with the mass being negligible. So in terms of their penetrating power, it's going to be virtually identical to the beta negative and just pass through some thin layers of aluminum. Up next is the most dangerous form of radiation, and that is the gamma ray. Gamma rays, you may remember them from the electromagnetic spectrum. They are not matter at all. They have actually zero mass, not negligible mass, but literally zero. They are just energy. This is going to have the most penetrating power because, again, it is just energy. So this can travel through a few inches of lead, which is kind of a big deal. Lead is a very dense metal. Um, this is the type of radiation that you get from really, like, big things happening in space. But it can appear on Earth. So it is important to uh, be careful with these things. Now, here we are looking at the penetrating power of each of these forms of radiation. So we have alpha represented by that little alpha symbol. <laughs> I like to draw it like a fish. Um, so that is going to more or less get through paper. It's kind of like stopped by paper. It depends on the type of paper. Um, the beta, both positive and negative, can get to aluminum. And then the gamma can go all the way out to lead. So here is a diagram kind of showing you types of radiation, and we have that alpha up at the top. We have the two protons, two neutrons. It's a pretty hefty form of radiation, and it is going to be stopped by paper. Then we have those beta rays, both positive and negative beta. Um, they can get through your body, which is mostly water, but it will be stopped by a few inches of aluminum. Then we have gamma rays. Um, so the gamma rays like we said, are just energy. So they will be able to travel through quite a bit. Uh, water is a really good insulator when it comes to radiation. This is why um, nuclear power plants use a lot of water, not only for cooling, but also for preventing rays from getting out. X-rays are the exact same X-rays that you're thinking of when it comes to uh, medical diagnosis and checking for broken bones. Uh, those are very similar to gamma rays, except not so intense, and they are also found on the electromagnetic spectrum. They are just energy, so they will have a pretty decent penetrating power. Those neutron rays down at the bottom, you don't have to worry about those so much. Um, it's not something that we talk about in high school chemistry, but just comparatively, they do a lot of damage. <laughs> So a lot of the time you'll see these types of radiation distinguishments really in the form of filling in nuclear reactions. We're going to talk more about that in my next lesson video, but I'm just going to tell you real quick that you can fill these in using just some basic algebra skills. Um, so the law of conservation is still going to apply to nuclear reactions. It's a little bit different. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Albert Einstein. E equals mc squared is really where a lot of this comes from. Um, but what should happen is that the mass number that sits on the top of this reaction should be the same throughout. And the uh, atomic number on the bottom should be the same throughout on both sides of this reaction. So if you look here, we have plutonium-239. PU is plutonium, and 239 is the mass number. So that's how you would identify it, plutonium-239. It is going to undergo some reaction, but it is still going to be plutonium-239. So in that case, the only form of radiation that could come out has no mass and no charge or no atomic number to it. So that is going to be represented by gamma rays. Now, the next one, you have cobalt-27 emitting particles out of its nucleus, and it is able to become nickel-60. Did I say cobalt-27? Cobalt-60. Cobalt-60. <laughs> 
<laughs> can get some particles out of its nucleus and then it will become nickel 60. I know that this sounds weird, one atom converting into another, but this is because it is a, a its own branch of chemistry, nuclear chemistry. And it is very much different from your standard chemistry. This is nuclear reactions we're talking, not chemical reactions. Um, we will talk more about this as we get deeper into this unit. So if you're a little confused, hold on, we'll get there. Um, but this is what happens. We're emitting particles out of the nucleus. And as this happens, um, the nucleus is going to change. And when the nucleus changes, the identity of an atom can change. So uh, we have here cobalt becoming nickel by emitting particles out of the nucleus. So um, the mass number is 60 to begin with, and it ends on 60. So my mass number of whatever radiation this is would have to be zero. We can't change the mass number. But my atomic number on the bottom goes from 27 to 28. So in doing that, it has kind of gained a proton. It's not exactly how that works. Um, there's a, a change inside the nucleus that is the result of looking like it gained a proton. It didn't just like grab a proton out of thin air. Um, there is certainly more details to that if you are interested in learning them, but for the purposes of high school chemistry, you don't really need to know what exactly happens. Uh, just know that there is a manipulation of the nucleus and that's it. So, um, in this case, a beta negative particle would have had to have been emitted in order for the, um, the cobalt to convert into nickel because 28 minus the one will give you 27. There still is conservation of matter, kind of. <laughs> um, so that is kind of how you would figure out these reactions. You just do it with a little bit of algebra, and then you can determine what type of radiation is being emitted. Sometimes based on the type of radiation, you can figure out what the daughter nucleus is going to be, which is what we would call the new nucleus um, after the, the change has taken place. So again, more on this as we dig deeper into it, but this is just like the baseline that there's four types of radiation. And if there's any questions, please, of course, leave them in the comments below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.